Hello, welcome to this issue of building an R53 turbocharged engine. I want to clear up a couple of things from the previous videos uh, which weren't as clear as they could have been. So, firstly, I got asked a few questions about the plastic gauge and how I did with the bolts, what I did with the bolts. So, when I go about doing the plastic gauge, I always use these old bolts here and I'll do all of my torquing and gapping on the bearings with these bolts. Once that's done, it's down to BMW and new fixings and always replace those fixings. Um, I have in the past reused them and I've not had issues but when you are building an engine for power you want to make sure that we are covered with at least the best bolts that we can get. So that's one thing I wanted to sort out there. So I just generally go with old bolts, do all of my gapping and torquing and then I'll whip them out and replace them with new ones. Another change that I'm making to the engine from the initial specification where I said what I would be installing is rather than running these ACL bearings, which are perfectly fine, I've run them before, there's nothing wrong with these in an engine, I've never had any issues, but I did want to go with the King Racing bearings, the 4600 XP range, and I've managed to source a set, so these ones will be going on the Conrods. These ones are going on the shelf. But to be sure, I bought myself a second set, so uh, if I need them in the future, I've got them ready to roll. So I'm going to install the assembly now. And one thing I've got to do before I do that, and I'll do it twice, once now and then once before it goes into the engine, is just make sure that all these rings are clocked. Now, the way I clock them is as per the image on the screen. And with these piston rings in, as they are uncompressed at the moment, they move really easily. So the reason we want to have a clocked set of piston rings is we don't want to, we want to minimise the blow by on here. So generally, what you're looking for is 180 degrees. But again, keep your eyes on the picture. That's what I'll do. So they'll go in, and then just before I compress them, just to put them in the engine, I'll make sure the rings are still exactly where I want them because they do move really easily when they're in their uncompressed state. Okay, having spent some time. Um, assembling these and using the plastic gauge. Some of the things that I've found with the K1's um, Conrods, I thought I'd mention, um, they're all a machined assembly. So what I've done and down the side is I've marked them up to show that this was a pair. So I'll make sure that these always go back in the right way because I want to make sure all the alignment's right. One of the things I do find frustrating for this is these ARP bolts already came up, came in, torqued up. So they were a bit of a pain to undo because you've got to hold the Conrods while trying to undo these bolts. I didn't enjoy that. So what I'm gonna do is take these caps off and we're gonna lubricate up the shells which have already been plastic aged and we're gonna get them in starting at one. Uh, this is already identified here as number one from when I set all the rings up. They've all been clocked, but we will check one last time that they are. So taking those out and putting them carefully on the side. I'm just gonna make sure that these are liberally coated in uh, assembly lube. Um, not too much, but I guess you can't ever have too much. Right, that's that done. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm just gonna make sure that all of my rings are, and they're not. So it's amazing how just touching them every now and again can uh, can cause these all to move around. So let's just get that in the right place, there we go. So all of those rings are right. So what we use next is, I'm going to use my piston ring compression tool. There are some much, much nicer units than uh, than this available if you'd like to. So let's see if I can do that one-handed. I can't. Let's put them there. Hopefully they won't uh, turn again. This is essentially just some spring steel, but you, you basically press the button on the side, that'll release the spring mechanism. Then what we do is we put it around the piston ring and we just tighten it up. So again, just a final check. Yes, my rings are where they want. I've got an arrow there, which is going to be pointing towards the timing chain. And I've got this enough. Let's see, otherwise I'm going to have to open it up a bit more. No, well, again, try not to, uh, try not to uh, turn it if you can, because any moving motion is going to just move those rings around. Then we'll just clock this. Keep going up with this until it's all compressed. I've still got a ring outstanding, so we go nice and tight. Okay, um, yeah, as I said, there are much better tools than this available, and this isn't the greatest 
So with that in place and some lubrication on the bottom, just make sure that they're all sitting correct. They're not. I'll just push that in a bit more. There we go, nice and flush. So what I'm going to try and do now is carefully drop this down. What I don't want to do is really drag it down the side walls. But some people like to put on. Uh, they like to put some uh, masking tape or whatnot on. Now, this should be concentric, but it's not. Um, and that's down to the fact that this tool is not particularly great. So making sure it's all aligned up, the pistons where I wanted to do. Just can use the back end of a, uh, a rubber mallet, but um, I've seen lots of different ways. And all we want to do is very, very carefully take this down. Now, the piston ring compression guides allow this to go into at any point. If I start finding that we've got difficulties, we're just going to stop and we'll undo it. Uh, there should be no restriction of it going in. If it stops, then there's a good chance there's a ring preventing it. Um, I think I might even be experiencing that now. Let's just see if that is... I don't know. Um, because we don't want to be damaging anything. Let's see if we can get an extra turn on that and keep it nice and tight. I could. I couldn't before when the whole piece was in, so maybe... Maybe it's time for a new compression tool, so let's take it down. Before I do anything, just take a look underneath, make sure that I'm aligning okay on this. And I am, I'm still smack going on where I should be. And it's just the two top compression rings now that are causing me an issue. There we go, and we're in. So now that's in, what I'll do is I'll flip this over. That shouldn't fall out. If it falls out, oh God, God, if it falls out. Let's get this thing over. Okay, we're pretty good. So I'm just gonna wiggle the crank while I'm pushing this and then we'll drive it round. Okay. Now that piston, when I put it in, what I do is I generally lubricate them up prior to pushing them in. And that just uses some engine oil to do that. It just helps guide it down. So aligning up the pen marks that I've put on previously, I'll just drop this cap on. Now, these don't follow the mini torque standards. They follow the ARP torque standards. So you get a one and a half inch by three eighths uh, 2000 series ARP bolt and what they recommend you to do there is go 25 foot pounds or uh, ooh, 33 um, Newton meters is about what that will be so what I've got to be very careful here of is making sure that the loose squirters we put in earlier on aren't causing us an issue and uh, they are in this issue so let's, uh, let's get a screwdriver and just move them over so they fit into the cutout. Obviously, I like to do this now and keep them loose. I can always tighten them up later as I need to, so. And, and now I've got that in place, I can actually put the uh, oil squirter through exactly where I want it in relationship to the piston. And then we'll lock that into place there. But first thing to do here now is keeping them up there. I want to take my small, because I don't need the big one, tool wrench. And we're gonna just tighten these up to 25 foot pounds or we'll call it 34 for this instance, newton meters. So just very lightly at this moment in time. Um, the, once they're, tight, they're torqued up, I'll go and get my other gauge, which will allow me to take it to 55 degrees. So it's a torque and stretch affair. Uh, so once that's in, Okay, there's number one in. Right. So we're flipping back over. Drop the pin back in. Right, on this one, I'm just gonna put a bit more engine oil around the top um, and then we'll just drive that by hand just to make sure that it feels as we expect.
Okay. And just keep them bores lined up. Okay, put that to the next one. There we go. What I do is drive the assembly round. Obviously, this is slightly more difficult at the moment because I've got nothing to uh, to pull against. So make sure when you're moving them, they are all clear to start with. Then again, take your screwdriver, take your torque wrench. Just make sure that they're held somewhere around the middle to start you off. Last thing you want is these things touching. If you think that they need backing off, then uh, please back them off first because now's your opportunity to make sure that you've got these in the right place. So one looks like it's not quite right. So let's get four set first. Okay, and... Now all the uh, con rods are in, the pistons are in, the squirters have been set and they've been torqued up. The next part is to flip this engine over and get the cylinder head on. To do that, I'm going to first set cylinder one to TDC. I don't need it there at the moment, but uh, it'll help in the long term to know that it's at least close to where it was. So I'll just turn the crank around till it feels like it's about TDC. Okay, so with the engine flipped over, I just want to clean up some of this uh, this oil that's sitting on the surface uh, and just make sure that the top's nice and clean because now we're going to go ahead and install this cylinder head. Um, I want to remove the rocker cover off that first so we're down to just a bare cylinder head and obviously get the gasket installed. So I'll get stuff cleaned up now and then we can jump on to uh, getting that installed. Okay, with the engine ready, we're going to be putting on our new head gasket so the first thing to do as with any other parts is check it over what you'll notice on the r53 head gaskets is the uh, water holes from this side to this side are actually different sizes and the reason for that is the water pump which used to pump at the back used to have to force all the coolant to the front otherwise it would just go through the larger holes and pass through now interestingly um I've got the water pump where the cooper is, so normally that's a balanced set of holes all the way across, but I'm going to run this gasket, um, and we find that actually this works okay. So, first of all, it's figuring out what size I need to go to. So I know the water pump came on this side, and let's get that on, just make sure I've not been silly. Okay, so the good thing is you put it on, and then you realise you have been silly. Uh, the larger holes here and down here are for your dowels, your location dowels, so it's a good job they put that in. Who knows what kind of mess we could have been in. So let's just make sure, is that fitting how I want it to? It is. Just go round, just checking over everything. Cool, okay, so the next thing is now, let's get the head ready and we can get that on and we can get it bolted on the arp bolts these just go in lubricated and hand tight uh, as per the instructions i find i generally just stick a small hex key on the top to help drive them in but you don't torque them at all because that'll give you issues taking the cylinder head we want to get that installed now uh, the the nice part is obviously the first part which is just taking our cylinder head aligning it up with the studs and dropping it on Let's just make sure it's wiggled into its rightful place. There we go. Okay, so there's a few things we need to do here. Just need to make sure we've got all the parts ready to go. Um, need to just make sure that there's nothing else that's crept into here. No, there's just, you get a lot of pitting and it looks like you might have a little bit of dust or something sitting on the top, but these are notorious for having uh, pitting marks in the aluminium. With the cylinder head in place, the next thing I want to do is get the nuts on and start getting this torque down. So we've got the ARP fixings in here. Now their recommendation is we use their lubrication and we do a three stage torquing technique. That is, we torque up the first ones to a small amount, then we go back and we do them again and again, working in the OEM recommended manner, which I'll put up as a picture as part of the instructions from ARP. So I'll just get a little bit of this lubrication on it. The reason they want you to use this lubrication is they know the viscosity of it. So they know when you're talking this up that the, uh, the lubrication is gonna behave in the same manner, which means you're gonna achieve a very similar torque spec wherever you are in the world. We always start in the middle, um, even though it doesn't matter for the washers, we just wanna put them in just to spread load. And um, if we go in the same order that we're gonna work in, 
um, it just gets into that mindset of uh, tightening everything up in the right manner. There's two little M8s on the outside of these. It would be nice if ARP actually included those in the uh, in the pack. Uh, I don't think they do anything. It's just more the inconvenience. You buy an ARP head stud kit and you think, great, I don't need to buy any other bolts until you come to put it together and you go, oh, do I reuse? Do I buy new? Um, I, I've bought new, but I have in the past reused and I probably would do again. So let's get them started. So first thing I want to do is just make sure that these all get started. Uh, they're a bit fiddly to get on. Just do them as pairs as we go round. Don't want to go crossing any of these, I want to get them in nice, so always starting them by hand. Come on, off you go. There we go. See, they do want to play. They do want to go in there. Uh, it'd be a lot easier if I could uh, fit my fingers in. It'd be a lot easier if I went and grabbed the uh, the socket for it. I don't know what socket's required, but you can pretty much guarantee if it's ARP, it's going to be something in metric, sorry, something imperial on the outside, and it'll be a metric thread on the inside. It's always, uh, it's always good fun, and they're always a 12 point. I say they're always 12 point, I bet I'm going to be wrong when I come to looking at some of the other ones. <coughs> oh no, you see, that's just what happens. Uh, what do you reckon, half inch? Half inch. All right, let's just wind them down by hand. Let's get them in there. Yes, that's great. Okay, so we're gonna go around and do 30, 30, 30. Um, the general mini specification is, uh, I think it's 30 then plus 90 degrees on your, on your clocking. Uh, so you tighten it up to 30 newton meters and then holding your torque wrench or whatever you want to use, uh, you, you drive it around 90 degrees. You don't need a, uh, you don't need a guide or a, uh, a needle to prove what 90 degrees is, is nice and easy. Unlike, uh, the ARP bolts on the, uh, con rods, which need 55 degrees, which has you all confused and fuffled on what 55 degrees actually looks like in terms of movement. So, get this and we'll just use the baby one at the moment this one will take us uh, at least for the first stage it'll get us going and then I'll have to change over to one of the bigger ones let's get it what are we on uh, 10 20 30 All right let's let's get this first stage going okay Nice feeling getting it this far. It does actually feel like we might have an engine at some point. I think I did that one there already. I did. Let's go to this one. do now is just go and grab the uh, bigger brother torque wrench and we'll go with that okay with the first round done up at 30 we're now going to take them up to 60 
Okay, right, we're now going to set the next settings and just make sure we're going. Three equal steps, 265 newton meters. So we're currently at 40. So now what I'll do is I'll just jump over to, uh, well, it's 60 newton meters and about 43 foot pounds. So what I'll do now is because I've got it in pounds and feet, I'll get it up to 65 as they ask, which is about 88, I think. Uh, something like that i might have the conversion wrong so follow the manufacturing's recommended torque specifications and nuts three core steps up to 65 foot pounds 65 foot pounds oh that is a lot right, okay there we go Okay, next stage is let's get these cylinder head bolts in uh, on the outside. Nice easy torque spec, just under 30, 28 newton meters. Didn't do these with the rest of them, um, generally leave them till last. Um, let's get them in, there we go. I mean, you recommend uh, the oil and the grease that comes on these bolts that you uh, you leave on. Again, now I'm guessing this is to help with the uh, the torque spec, but I can't imagine these ones here are doing particularly much, especially as they're right next to some big old ARP studs. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Um, I hope it's been entertaining, and uh, I hope you've learned something from it. I look forward to uh, doing some more videos and uh, releasing them as soon as I can. Take it easy.